The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this, my Father, by this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples." The Gospel of the Lord. Our first reading this weekend is interesting. Interesting reading from the Acts of the Apostles who talks to us about the early days of Saul, who would eventually become Paul. Saul was the persecutor of Christians, remember? And it tells us a little bit of the story of how he was kind of, it was difficult to accept him in the beginning, right? You just think about it, you think about if, if your worst enemy or the person that you fear the most in life, and maybe that's, you know, who knows what it is. I'm not going to start naming people. <laughs> don't want don't to label anybody. But your worst enemy or the, the, the person or the entity that you're most afraid of in life, all of a sudden came up to you and said, hey, come on, I've been joking all these years. Let's hang out for a while. You can only imagine that you'd probably be a little hesitant, right? Like, who are you, and what would you do with the evil guy that used to not like me? You know, That's what they were saying about Saul. Saul comes into the picture, and even this, so we have to understand that a little bit of a background here. This is three years after Saul's conversion. Saul has been learning from the disciples. Saul has been living in the disciple community, learning about Christ and even preaching and teaching about Jesus. And it says that he was proclaiming the gospel. He was proclaiming, he was evangelizing already. But you can only imagine how hesitant they were that this guy who was persecuting Christians has now made his way inside their little circle. This is still, you know, three-year-old Christian church. It's a still infantile, baby church. So you can understand their fear and their hesitation. It said many of the disciples wanted nothing to do with him. They pushed him aside. They didn't want anything to do with it. So Barnabas takes him, kind of takes him under his wing, and takes him directly to the apostles. Takes him directly to those 12 who Jesus were, you know, they were his BFFs, his best friends. They were his closest companions. The people that were with him in the Last Supper. People that went up the mountain of transfiguration with him. People that were were there at at Pentecost, which we'll be celebrating in just a few weeks. He takes them directly to them, and they accept him. But the interesting thing to me is, how did Paul continue for three whole years when all of these disciples of Jesus were terrified of him? were afraid of him. And every time he'd go into a little Christian community, these little house churches that they would have, they would be terrified and they would shove him out. They, they didn't believe that he was really converted. They thought it might be a little bit of a trick. You know? How did he go on for three years and make it to this point where he was accepted? And then would eventually go on to become the, the disciple and the apostle to the Gentiles. You know, to go out to spread the good news. I'm convinced that the one thing that he did that kept him going 
was to remain. To remain connected to the Jesus Christ who brought him his conversion. Who, as they say, knocked him off of his horse or really just had him experience this bright light and this conversion and then witnessing the risen Lord Jesus Christ. He had to remain in him. And I think that's the focus of our readings. And that's, it's beautiful how they start off with this Paul and his not being accepted. And then how Paul had to remain in order to convince those 12 apostles. He had to remain faithful and continue to proclaim Jesus Christ, even in the midst of persecution. He had to remain. And I think that's the focus this weekend, is to remain. If you read the Gospel and you read our second reading today, the word remain, I don't know if you were counting, but the word remain is mentioned 13 times. That's a pretty important message. That's a pretty, uh, I think, important way that God is saying to us through His church, I want you to focus on something this weekend. The church has prepared for us these readings and the first letter of John that we heard in the second reading today talked about how we can remain. The way that we know that we remain in Jesus Christ and that He remains as us in us is what? Is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit allows us and keeps us remaining in Christ. But then Jesus takes that a little bit further. Actually, he takes it a lot further. And he gives us, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful images and one of the most clear images for us to understand of how we are to remain. If Jesus himself in the Gospel just now, this is just only one portion of the Gospel of John, if this is only one portion and Jesus mentions remaining nine times in ten sentences, I think he wants us to remain, right? I think he's trying to give us a very pointed picture. So what does it mean to remain? And Jesus talks about the vine and the branches. This is the image that Jesus gives to us that it, to help us understand what it means to remain. He says, I am the vine and you are the branches. You need to remain on the vine. It's a beautiful thing. And three years and two weeks ago, our bishop, Bishop Joseph Hannafeld, when he was named and, and consecrated as our bishop, he actually took that as his motto. I am the vine, you are the branches. Remain in me. And so Bishop Hanefeld has been focusing on how do we remain? How can we remain? If you read his articles in the newspaper, you often hear of Bishop Hanefeld talking about how we remain in our faith, how we remain in, in this world to our, uh, remain connected to Christ Jesus. And so Jesus uses that image of the vine and the branches. But the other interesting thing is he also talks about pruning. He also talks about how we not only have to remain on the vine, but pruning is necessary. Pruning is necessary. Difficulties and hardships of this life are necessary. It's not an easy thing to remain in Christ. In fact, he's telling us and guaranteeing us it's difficult to remain in Christ. Pruning is necessary in order for us to bear fruit, right? If you want beautiful rose bushes, you have to prune them. If you want good vines and a good produce of grapes, if you ask anyone who has a vineyard, you know that you have to prune those vines. Hardships and difficulty have to happen in order for growth and fruit to be born, in order for us to bear fruit in our lives. But I think the focus to remain is one thing that I want to just focus on briefly tonight, is this how do we remain? And because I think sometimes we can just look right past that. Even though it's mentioned 13 times in our readings, we might just be like, oh, yeah, remain, vine, branches, whatever. How do we do that? How do we remain? We all want that, right? We wouldn't be here if we didn't want that. We want to remain. We come back every week because somehow or another, in our own sinful ways, we've broken away from the vine a little bit or the vine is snapped a little bit, and we need to remain, we need to be attached back. 
But to remain is more than just staying. Right? To just stay wouldn't be any good. For Jesus to tell his disciples and his apostles to, to stay. Christianity would have, would have never left Judea, would have never left Israel, Jerusalem. It would have stayed there. It would have never went on to Gentile nations. It would have never went on to, to, to other nations around the world. Christianity would have never made it to North America. It would have never made it to the United States. So to just stay is not what Jesus is talking about. What Jesus is talking about when he says to remain is a means of attaching ourselves. To remain is a means of attaching ourselves, and not only attaching ourselves, but drawing life from. To attach ourselves and to draw life from is what Jesus is really talking about. And we have a lot of things in our life that we get attached to, right? I know I do. I have a lot of things that I'm attached to. A lot of, you know, a lot of us are attached to our phones. I think they're sewn onto our hands sometimes. I walk around and it amazes me. I, I, in a beautiful way, I celebrated a funeral the other day and there was a motorcycle or a motorcade that, that rode behind us in the funeral and I literally saw a guy holding a, a cell phone and driving a motorcycle from here all the way to Fort McPherson at 25 miles an hour. That's a long drive. And he held his hand up there the whole time. He didn't move his hand. Like, does he get a, a board stuck in his arm or something so that he can hold his hand up there for so long? It's amazing how attached we are to things like that. You know, in the midst of grieving and things like that, that was the one thing that I saw through the whole funeral was just snap, 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 the selfie in front of a casket. You know. We're attached to things like that. Not just cell phones are, are not bad, not in themselves. Pope Francis himself said, we can use cell phones for good. We can use cell phones to draw us closer to Christ, to, to read the scripture, to read the catechism. We can use cell But there's so many attachments. But Christ wants us to remain in a way that we attach ourselves to him. That we attach ourselves to him as the vine. As a branch is attached to the vine. It has to go there. And where the vine goes, the branches go. If you move the vine over this way, the branches go along with it, right? To attach ourselves in the same way to Christ. To attach ourselves to him so that when he moves, we move as well. And we don't have to play catch up and say, wow, I've kind of been gone for a while. I need to run this way for a while to catch up with Christ. To attach ourselves to Christ is some of what he is talking about when he talks about to remain. And then it's to draw life from. To draw life from. And I think that life is the spirit that John is talking about in that second reading today. The way that we know that we remain in Christ and He is us is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the life that is given to us from the vine. It flows through the vine. It flows through the vine into the branches. And so we draw our life, we draw our strength, we draw our courage, we draw our faith. We draw all of this from the vine which we are attached to in a very real way that Christ wants us to attach to. And the great thing is, is that sometimes, even though the, the branch might be broken off a little bit from the vine, it can be replaced. It can be uh, mended back onto the vine. I've seen this done. I've seen a, a branch off of a vine that is kind of split and about to break off, and I've seen it been wrapped with a cloth, and two weeks later after watering, that branch is just like it was not broke off again because it continued to draw its life, continued to draw its sustenance from that vine. And Christ gives us in the church a means of doing that. Christ gives us in the church a means of staying on the vine, of remaining on the vine, attaching ourselves and receiving that life through the sacraments. And mending us, healing us when we have broken in, a way, in, a, in, in some way away from the vine, he can mend that through his sacraments. 
He mends that through the sacrament of reconciliation. He mends that through the sacrament of the Eucharist because he wants more than anything for us to remain. He wants more than anything for the life of the Holy Spirit to flow through the vine, flow through him and into us. And the Holy Spirit is most real and most present and alive in the church, in us. We are the church. We are the branches. The vine, is, is, the vine will go. The vine goes in different directions, but what gives the vine its fullness is the branches, right? Just as vine on the ground isn't going to produce any fruit. Christ, in a sense, uses us as his branches to spread that spirit abroad, to spread that spirit uh, around us so that we can bear fruit. So this weekend, as Christ reminds us to remain, I think it would be good for us to reflect on how can we better remain on Christ? How can we better attach ourselves to Christ? How can we better draw life from the vine? And the sacraments of the church that the sacrament offers us as a means of drawing life and as a means of staying and remaining. How can we remain in Christ? As we go forth this week, we just pray that there's a, we're better able to, to find ways to remain in Christ. That we're better able to find ways to allow Him and His Holy Spirit to flow through Him into us, especially in and through the sacrament.